An avid jogger has a run-in with tragedy when her car is crushed in a double head-on collision. And the trauma team must race to put her back together again. A hunting accident leaves a man clinging to life with little more than hope. Everyone just back right now, hold off. And a speeding transport truck crashes into the squad car of a young police officer and threatens his career and his life. Hang on, Mark. It's okay, John. Each day, most of us go about our lives oblivious to the possibility of a life-altering tragedy. But for those battling on the front lines of emergency services, danger is extreme and ever-present. Today at Sunnybrook and Women's College Health Center, there's a flurry of activity. The media gather and police stand by, all awaiting the arrival of a severely injured comrade. Just 15 minutes ago, 27-year-old Constable Mark Oberhauser was the victim of a devastating car crash that now threatens to alter the course of his life. Mark, Just get okay. that settled, then we'll get recorded. Tuck it. No airbag. 27-year-old um, Peel police officer T-boned by a transport truck. Uh, Mark and myself were responding to an emergency call. Uh, we were in separate cars. Um, the truck was coming northbound. I was able to open the door, and I jumped in the car with them. You'd be surprised how fast things can happen. Fire and ambulance uh, were called. Trauma team leader Dr. McDonald and his team must act quickly to discover what injuries are causing Mark to remain unconscious. Hang on, Mark. It's okay, Don. We're just trying to help you out. Sorry. The medic's giving him two. Yeah, two of her set, please. Just get okay. that settled and then we'll get report, okay? You guys are happy Whoa. with this intubation? As the trauma team races to understand the full extent of this young man's injuries, his family anxiously waits, struggling to cope with what no family is ever prepared to deal with. Nothing uh, even remotely comparable to uh, this particular accident. As this young police officer desperately clings to his ebbing life, no less than a dozen of his comrades keep vigil outside the trauma room. Really no, he's obeying. not been talking okay. and he's not been obeying. Okay. Dr. McDonald and his colleagues scramble to understand Mark's condition and how to improve this young officer's chances of survival. Just two hours ago, 55-year-old Al Martin was out for an early morning deer hunt when fate dealt him a deadly card. While waiting in a hunting blind, the platform Al was sitting on suddenly gave way, plunging him 15 feet to the ground below. When he failed to return home, his wife went looking for him, eventually finding Al crumpled and unconscious at the foot of the tree. An air ambulance rushes Al to Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, where Dr. Chugtai and his team are briefed on his condition. Medics arrives. Confirm no sensation mid-abdomen, no other traumatic injuries. Currently, he does have a pulse. And is he awake right now or no? He has, he has a gag reflex. He's just starting to groan now. Okay. Let's get this stuff off. Let's get ready to intubate, okay? Since his arrival, Al has been unable to move his legs, and the doctors suspect a head or spinal injury. Are you awake? Okay, good. Let's get some bloods off this one. Keep breathing. Okay. Uh, so some priorities are we need to check that chest x-ray. There's no laceration or anything on the scalp. So the, only the, only the, only the only thing he's got a laceration across his tongue. Uh, that was a motor. As the team begins their examination of Al, his condition deteriorates and his blood pressure drops. If it drops too low, Al could be headed for a deadly cardiac arrest. We just need to give him some pressers to get his blood pressure up. 
do a quick right upper quadrant and a uh, cherry cardio. X-ray. X-ray. Dr. Chugtai discovers the first clue to Al's mysterious condition. He notices that Al's venous pressure is still very strong. So because he's got a high CVP, we put the central line in, it's very full. So we're going to get fluids, but he needs pressures. The fact that Al's blood is flowing freely suggests that his low blood pressure isn't the brutal handiwork of a hemorrhage, internal or otherwise. But it means the source of Al's unstable blood pressure remains unknown. Yeah, pressure 73 over 57. Dr. Chugtai orders the team to administer drugs that will constrict Al's arteries and raise his blood pressure. Okay, can you call the ICU please and tell them that we have an intubated Spinal cord injury patient, unstable. As the drugs begin to raise Al's blood pressure, the team faces another deadly hurdle. His heart rate mysteriously begins to fall, and again, this avid hunter plunges ever closer to a fatal cardiac arrest. The wailing sirens announce the arrival of another victim to the trauma center. This time it's Sharon Moon, a 42-year-old bookkeeper who arrived disoriented and combative, a sure sign of a deadly head injury. Sharon was in the most brutal of car accidents, a head-on collision. She survived that, but then bounced immediately into another, her small body broken by a furious embrace of steel and glass. Miraculously, she survived both assaults, but they left her shattered from head to toe. Even for the seasoned trauma team, the scope and scale of Sharon's injuries is staggering. Please. Sharon? Sharon, make an okay sign here. Make an O. Make an O sign. You have to help me. Can you feel that? Yeah, right there. This ordinary day turned tragic threatens to shatter Sharon's entire okay. life. Pinching her hand hard, Dr. Biederman hears only a whisper. It's a weak response, but it's a good sign. It's good. For this active woman with a passion for running, the accident threatens more than just her career as a bookkeeper. It could cost Sharon her life. The team must gather all their experience and knowledge in order to fend off the dark future being summoned by Sharon's many injuries. Can you feel this here? Can you wiggle your toes on the left side? And just when things look their most grim, the horizon grows even darker. Can you feel down here? Can you feel down? Sharon can't feel her toes. Can you feel that? Sharon's lack of sensation suggests a terrible possibility, permanent spinal damage. Guys, why don't we log her over? Let's log her over. Which side do you want to log her over? Okay. Yeah, you know, one, two, and three. Oh. So someone can check her back. The doctor moves his hand deftly and gently up Sharon's spine, searching to see if the damage they fear is there in her very bones. Okay, hold on. Does this hurt right here? Okay. Here. Please pain around the C7, T1 area. The tenderness around Sharon's C7 vertebrae is a probable indication of a spinal injury. Now the team must act quickly to stabilize Sharon's other injuries. In cases involving spinal damage, the first critical hours between injury and surgery are the most important. The longer it takes the team to stabilize Sharon, the greater the chance she'll never walk again. In the corridors of Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, police keep an ever-present vigil as they wait for news of the fate of a fallen comrade. Trauma team leader Dr. McDonald and his team battle to save young Constable Mark Oberhauser from the injuries he received in a horrible collision. It's my youngest brother, Mark, on duty, on a call. Uh, he was in his police vehicle at the time with sirens and uh, lights on, and um, the accident happened. While responding to an emergency call at high speed, Mark's cruiser was slammed into by 18 tons of transport truck. So 
So was he, I mean, you were talking to him, is he? No. Not really? No, he's been basically like this the whole time. He's had his eyes deviated to the left. Got it, okay. Okay? Yeah. Since the accident, Mark has not regained consciousness, and this has Dr. McDonald worried. At this stage, it's hard to predict his prognosis, and, and it's difficult to examine him normally because he can't tell you where he hurts or where he's tender or, or so forth. So we actually have to look for other sources. As Mark's colleagues stand by in the hallway, the trauma team's detective work begins. They'll scrutinize each shade of the x-rays for signs of a head injury. As blood is taken to see if it bears enough oxygen to keep his brain alive, a radiologist is brought in to ultrasound Mark's torso, hopefully revealing what the eyes of the x-ray cannot. Doing the fast roll -em. We're gonna log roll him in about three minutes. Well, no, you guys are more While his convulsions and lack of consciousness are sure signs of a head injury, it's frustrating for the team when each test comes up clean, showing no indication of what is wrong with Mark. Make sure you kind of come above the kidney and below the kidney, sort of all around the kidney. It's looking good there, but I'm happy with that. Are you ready to log roll? Suddenly, there's an unwelcome surprise. I don't see any other source here. And there are no visible cuts to explain the bleeding. This unexpected development demands rapid action and a new plan. Okay, we may not get to TNL spine. Can we get ready to go to CT? Okay, Paula, can you go on CT? Sure. They can take up head, C spine. The team scrambles to get Mark stable. They need to get him to CT for a brain scan fast. <coughs> the blood loss from the ear whispers a grim prognosis. Permanent brain injury or death. With the entire trauma team and his colleagues in tow, Mark is rushed to CT, where the scans will reveal whether or not his fate will be decided by the brain surgeon's scalpel. Just 50 minutes ago, Constable Mark Oberhauser was rushed to the trauma center, a victim of a horrible transport truck collision. Now the trauma team will rush Mark to CT, where the scans will reveal if he needs life-saving brain surgery. The team moves quickly to ready Mark for the scan. But there's another complication. This guy's gonna start shivering and yeah, he won't stay still. His spasms will make it impossible to get clear images of his brain. Dr. McDonald orders the team to sedate Mark. Always a risk during this critical hour, but the team has no other options. They need those scans, and fast. The drugs work. Now Dr. McDonald can begin the painstaking process of scanning Mark's battered body. The team knows that Mark's life hangs in the balance. And the scans will reveal which way that balance is leaning. It's been only 11 minutes since 54-year-old Al Martin was rushed to Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, a victim of a tragic hunting accident. Now, Dr. Chugtai and his team race to raise Al's dropping heart rate before he goes into cardiac arrest. I'd just like to get his pressure above 100, that's all. But despite the team's best efforts, Al's heart rate plummets. Everyone just back right now, hold off. Is that the right one? Yeah. Heart rate 30, we need atrophy. One and 10 cc. Al is in cardiac arrest. 
Dr. Chugtai calls for drugs that will hopefully raise Al's sliding heart rate. Yes, one milligram per okay, you cc. Want to give it the drugs work, and Al's heart rate begins to rise. The fluctuating heart rate may be a blessing in disguise. It provides Dr. Chugtai with a clue as to what injuries are plaguing Al. This, this on and off arrest business is a spinal cord, sure. it's a high spinal cord injury. Otherwise, you don't arrest it like that so fast. As soon as we finish the bloods, we're going to log roll if he's stable enough. So we intubated him, putting in some lines, just getting some entries. No, then he has to ask for his level of consciousness decreased. So that, I don't know whether he hit his head or not, so we're assuming that maybe he has a head injury too. I'll let you know, okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Al's heart rate is finally stable enough that the team can examine him for spinal injuries. So let's check the spine. We needed some cover, so I'm actually on tilt two. So, what, what's going on up there in the upper thoracic spine? Is that uh, bruising and swelling? Or just hold him a second? It looks like it. We just sent a group and say, the exam confirms Dr. Chugtai's suspicions. Al has suffered a spinal trauma, which could leave him paralyzed or dead. The team hopes that x rays will determine just how severe the injury is. If you have a very high spinal cord injury, those are the centers that also control your heart and your lungs. So that could be a reason why you arrest. He's arrested twice already. Or he may have a head injury and be bleeding that we don't know about. X ray. This is about 25% chance maybe of, of making it. Down the hall, time is running out for 42-year-old Sharon Moon, the victim of a double head-on collision that shattered one arm and both her legs. Initial exams reveal the possibility of spinal damage. Pain around C7, T1 area. And the team rushes to stabilize Sharon's many injuries. Is this sore here? What about this side? Oh, not so much, mostly on this side. Uh, she probably has a left hip, something. Clinically, it looks like she's got an injury to her left hip, but it was a fracture, dislocation, or a combination of the two. You can't tell really until you get your x-rays. Have you sent that stuff on? Uh, chest is out, and the uh, pelvis. The pelvis I can bring right over. Yep, and yeah, pelvis. Yeah. In the glow of the x-ray, Sharon's future becomes clearer. The x-rays reveal a complete dislocation that's cutting off the blood supply to her leg. The team needs to return her hip back into position immediately if they hope to save this avid runner's leg. Yeah, her hip was dislocated behind. So the goal is to, uh, if you bring up her uh, knee or flex her hip, pull straight up and you're bringing the, the ball that's sitting behind the cup into the socket. Time is of the essence, and there's none to be spared for the trip to surgery. Here, among the millions of dollars of technology, Dr. Biederman takes action, using nothing more than knowing hands and brute force. Oh, 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 God, please help me. Oh, God, oh, God. Please, I'm begging you, no. There's a problem. Can somebody pull up the pelvic x-ray? The hip should be going in much easier. Dr. Biederman consults the x-rays to make sure he's plotting the right course. If he's wrong, Sharon may never walk again.
It's been only 22 minutes since 42-year-old Sharon Moon was rushed to the trauma room, the victim of a double head-on collision. Now doctors race to reset her dislocated hip and restore blood flow before her leg dies. But the team is having trouble putting the hip back into place. Dr. Biederman has double-checked the x-ray to be certain that he's pulling at the right angle and is left with one answer. Sharon's pain is so strong that her muscles are violently contracting against the team's combined strength. The only course of action left for the team is a risky one. Are you happy with that or not? Yes. I mean, the key to getting it in is having good sedation. Without that, you really are working against an uphill battle. So your muscles are relaxed, and then still it's painful, but you should feel a clunk, feel a gratifying clunk, so you know that it's in. The danger actually can be right afterwards. She can become quite uh, uh, depressed from a, a breathing perspective, and everything can go down, so she needs to be watched. Sedation is a serious gamble. The powerful sedatives could reduce Sharon's ability to breathe, but the team has little choice but to administer the drugs. Oh, oh shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, freak! Oh, God! The gamble pays off and Sharon's hip slips back into the socket. Her pain relief is almost instantaneous, and her system is weathering the drugs. Uh, now we can send her off to the CAT scan while doing the force sending her off. The team is off to CT, where they hope the scans will reveal the extent of Sharon's spinal injury and what course they need to steer to keep this active woman from a life in a wheelchair. Across the hospital, Dr. McDonald and his team ready Constable Mark Oberhauser for a CAT scan that will reveal the extent of the damage inflicted when his police cruiser was smashed by a speeding transport truck. CAT scan shows a number of findings that are concerning. bruising in the brain itself and there's been some bleeding both around the brain and in some of the pockets that exist within the brain. I'm, I'm really concerned about the degree of head injury and this is a pretty serious head injury I must say. Officer uh, Oberhauser may have loss of certain abilities, certain faculties, he may not be thinking right, he may have difficulty moving, walking and simple things like that. And so I couldn't say right now whether in his recovery, he'll be able to use his arms and his legs properly and coordinate and do all those things that you and I take for granted. Mark is taken to surgery, where doctors will try to stop the bleeding in Mark's battered brain. His friends and family can only wait for his awakening uncertain if it'll be a triumph or a tragedy. The young officer's colleagues keep vigil over their injured brother, Constable Mark Oberhauser. High above Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, an air ambulance races with yet another victim of a horrible accident. This time, the precious cargo is a 25-year-old man found on a country road. The young man is conscious, yet he's combative, a sure sign of a head injury, and EMS is forced to restrain him for his own good. Just over an hour ago, Troy Shepard lost control of his truck. He was a uh, rollover single occupant driver. Rollover ejected truck on top of his chest. He was ejected and pinned underneath the vehicle. Prolonged extrication to get him up from underneath there. The flipping vehicle ejected him, rolling onto his chest, 
pinning him to the dark road. It took Cruz nearly an hour to free him from the wreck. If Troy had been rescued any later, the blow to his chest would have certainly been fatal. But now, there's still hope, dwindling as it may be. Multiple rib fractures. Oh my god, it hurts. Oh no, please, come on. How's your breathing? Oh, oh The chest god. injury has compromised Troy's ability to breathe. And his state of shock prompts him to fight the hands attempting to deliver oxygen to his broken body. Do me a favor. Let me out. Open your eyes. Let me out. Do me a favor. Oh, let me out. Do me a oh, favor. Oh, Do me a favor. Stop moving. Uh, Troy, we're here to help you, okay? Uh, Here's what's gonna happen if you keep moving, you're gonna hurt yourself, okay? Uh, hurt yourself. Where's the mask? You? Trauma team leader Dr. Brenneman and his team finally get Troy under control and now begin to assess his injuries. Careful of the glass. Seriously, watch the glass. The glass. What the team finds immediately worrying are indications of a massive chest injury. X-ray. He's got a, a, a left flail chest, which means that the ribs are broken uh, in a couple of places so that his whole uh, segment of the chest wall is free floating. So when he takes, when he was taking a deep breath in, that part of his chest was being caved in because of all the broken ribs, and it's difficult to breathe. Okay. You got a serious injury? Yeah, sure. I've been trying to look out for you. That's really important. All right. It's really important. Yeah. OK, to set up for a left, uh, left chest tube, please. You've got a flail chest on here. Yeah. His shattered ribs have also collapsed Troy's lung, and now a chest tube needs to be inserted to drain the excess fluid and allow the lung to reinflate. He had a, a collapsed lung, and uh, he also had some blood uh, around his lung. That's probably from his rib fractures, and he's probably got a lung injury, uh, a lacerated lung as well. The chest tube does its work and helps to alleviate the pressure on his lung. But Dr. Brenneman is still concerned with the severity of Troy's injuries. Without knowing how badly damaged his lungs may be, they'll need to get him on a respirator as soon as possible. You have two good IVs peripherally, right? It's been just 36 minutes since Al Martin was rushed to the trauma room, the victim of a deer hunting accident. As they wait for x-rays, the team battles to control Al's fluctuating blood pressure and heart rate. Who has the phenylephrine? Right here. Uh, Can you give him some more? Yeah. Every time that his pressure goes below 100, we need to give him some more, okay? Because that's just going to keep going down. Dr. Chugtai confers with his colleague, Dr. McDonald, to help decide on a course of action for Al's mysterious condition. They notice he never moves his legs at all, so they thought spinal cord injury, and I think they're right. Ever since he's been here, his blood pressure is very labile. Like, it's gone down to 50, it's gone up to 180, to 200, and then back to 60, so it's gone up and down like autonomic sort of instability blood pressure, always with a lowish heart rate. Is it diluted in the 100 mics per minute? Keep that Neo handy. 72 over 4. Give, give him another one. Of course, because otherwise I'm going to tell you it's not going to be as fast as possible. So ideally the goal is to get this guy stable enough to get some scans on him, right? So, so far I haven't been able to do that, but actually right now the pressure is okay. But that's then 10 minutes later it might go down. The x-rays are in. Hopefully they'll provide the team with clues as to what is causing Al's condition. The pelvis looks good. This is his chest. Oh, yeah, he got two so wide yeah, he's got two, but two. Yeah, yeah. Just, look worse. The x-rays of Al's spine are inconclusive. The team has exhausted every course of action in the trauma room. The only thing that can reveal the nature of Al's injuries now is a CAT scan. Okay, let's get ready. CT, everybody. Al's blood pressure and heart rate are finally stable enough that he can be taken to CT. But he's not out of the woods yet. He could still go into cardiac arrest at any moment. There's still a whole bunch of unanswered questions in this man.
54-year-old Al Martin finally arrives at CT after a tumultuous 40 minutes in the trauma room. He was rushed to Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center after a 15-foot fall from a hunting blind left him shattered and crumpled at the base of a tree. The team suspects a high spinal cord injury, and the doctors hope the scans will reveal the cause of Al's mysteriously fluctuating blood pressure. Unwittingly, Al's indomitable will to live is becoming another hurdle for the trauma team. A CT scan demands that he be perfectly still, and any motion will make the scan unreadable. Is this driving his heart, yeah. or is this hypovolemia? Sorry. It's okay. It's all right. Just relax. We're just doing some tests on you, okay? You had a little accident. Finally, with a combination of drugs and restraints, they settle their patient and are able to take accurate scans. And the scans confirm the doctor's worst suspicions. It's a severe high spinal cord injury. Dr. McDonald rushes out to surgery while Dr. Chugtai interprets the scan's dire message. So we're just looking at the cervical spine here and oh my God, this is about the most impressive cervical spine uh, fracture dislocation I've ever seen. You can see here lower in the C-spine, it's 100% dislocated. So all of the, the fracture fragments and the, the vertebrae below have pushed into the spinal cord. So you can see here, the spinal cord is completely transected, it just stops. I would say that it looks very, very grim for him as far as walking ever again. He's paralyzed completely. I mean, we never make a final diagnosis uh, in the first hour. You know, we always give a benefit of 24 hours, but I can almost guarantee, given what I just saw on the scan, that uh, he won't be walking. With a high spinal injury this severe, Al's lucky just to be alive. The surgeons will do what they can, but chances are Al will remain a paraplegic for the rest of his life. In Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center CT, the doctors are about to learn the fate of 42-year-old Sharon Moon. Was found trapped in the car after the MBA. Traveling at highway speed, Sharon survived one head-on collision, only to bounce directly into another. The trauma team loads Sharon's fragile and battered frame into the barrel of the CT scanner. The scan reveals good news. They show no signs of head injury. Doctors will now examine each vertebrae one by one, searching for damage to Sharon's spine. Okay, second, I didn't see anything of you. No, I didn't see anything. Despite the incredible forces of a double head-on collision, the CT scan shows no damage to Sharon's head, neck, or spine. Now chances are good that she will walk again, but she still faces many hours of difficult surgery. Well, she's got uh, basically three injured limbs that we'll need to deal with, so we're probably looking at uh, maybe four to six hours of work here. So that means she's going to have trouble. She's going to be non-weight bearing for a prolonged period of time. And she's got one arm injured. So even getting around uh, with a wheelchair may be difficult. After several hours of surgery, Sharon is finally wheeled to ICU, where she will begin her long road to recovery. <laughs> Thank you.
Eight weeks after the accident, Sharon is struggling to regain her vitality and mobility. Her only memories of the accident have been pieced together from what she's been told. The doctor, he told me I broke everything except for this one, so, which, kind of, it, which is quite devastating for me because I'm very active. I, I know eventually it's going to be over, but it's just some days or days that you just want to run. I'm going to be walking before you know it. I'm determined. <laughs> Although Sharon's road to recovery is not an easy one, her spirit is indomitable, and she is spurred on by the vision of herself freed from the wheelchair and running again. It's been just 29 minutes since 25-year-old Troy Shepard was rushed to Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center after being pinned beneath his truck. The vehicle crushed his ribs, and now with one collapsed lung, the young man struggles just to catch his breath. His uh, chest injury was bad enough that he really needed to be intubated. He wouldn't last very long without help in breathing. With the help of a ventilator, Troy's breathing stabilizes. Now the team can begin to treat his other injuries. He's uh, got a definite head injury because he's been quite confused and combative. But it looks like his most significant injury so far is his chest. We're just going to go to CAT scan right now. You know, CT is head and chest and abdomen. I have another trauma patient here. I'm coming over. The team rushes Troy to CT, where they'll search for any other life-threatening internal injuries. And more importantly, they'll determine what course of action they need to take to keep this young man breathing. At Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, Dr. Brenneman and his team are about to see the internal devastation caused by a high-speed truck rollover. The truck flipped, pinning 25-year-old Troy to the road, crushing his chest. The team scans the young man's battered body searching for signs of internal damage and hope to find clues that will reveal the extent of Troy's massive chest injuries. The CT scans reveal good news. There is no obvious sign of trauma to Troy's head. And now the team can focus on his chest. The scan confirms what the doctors suspected. Troy has several broken ribs and a collapsed and punctured lung. Troy's lung puncture is not so severe that it will require immediate surgery. With the area around the lung properly drained, the puncture can begin to heal on its own. He has pretty severe chest trauma to the left side, a lot of broken ribs. His lung is still a little bit collapsed. Um, I think he's very lucky so far. Now, he's not quite finished yet because he's, you know, set up for pneumonia and, and some, you know, he can get some pretty bad chest complications, but hopefully we can get him through that uh, in our ICU. Just three days after he was rushed to Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, Troy is out of ICU and is recovering. Well, they say I was ejected, so I just remember riding along down a dirt road and winding up here in this hospital. I don't remember being airlifted here or anything. I just remember waking up here with a bunch of tubes in my mouth and broken ribs, uh, punctured lung, lots of scrapes and bruises. I feel really lucky to be alive. Pinned underneath the full-size pickup trucks. Pretty scary, I guess. Don't know how this little body held it all up, but it did. (laughs) 
It's been 45 minutes since doctors rushed 54-year-old Al Martin to surgery after discovering a devastating spinal injury he sustained when he fell 15 feet from a hunting platform. The surgeons labor for more than four hours doing what they can for Al. But with a spinal fracture so severe, his prognosis isn't good. You see all the time people who fall heights much higher than that and end up having no spinal injury and sometimes not even any major injuries. And another person who falls the distance this man did or even less and yet have catastrophic injuries. Like probably it's partly the way you land and partly the surface you land on and the rest is luck. Over the next few days in ICU, his vital signs return to normal and he regains consciousness. Can you wiggle your toe a little bit for me? Try anyway. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Although Al is facing a lifetime bound to a wheelchair, his spirit cannot be crushed. My goal now is to get back my feet and get back hunting and working and be with my friends. Someday maybe there will be a treatment for a gentleman like this, but, uh, but right now there's no surgical procedure, no medication that appears to show any promise to return spinal function in a case like this. Three months after leaving the care of Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, Al is in rehab. Although he is still paralyzed from the waist down, his recovery is nothing short of remarkable. You know, everything is starting to work now, my arms are starting to work, and I'm just working on my legs right now, and I think that's coming too, so. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that I'm really improving, I'm really good. Every day that I, I go to the gym, you know, let's say I feel better. There's something different, and you know, it's like even inside of my legs, let's say like I, I feel some trembling, you know, it's like something is coming. The point is I wanna get my legs back, which they are, let's say I'm starting to get some feelings in my toes. Uh, I got 10%. Then they give me 10% that I could walk back, but like the doctor says, he really doesn't know. I know I'm gonna walk again. I'm gonna try it hard anyway, even if as soon as I get out of here, I'm gonna you know, join a gym or join somewhere where I could work on my legs and get back and work in order. Back at Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center, a family gathers around their youngest son, police officer Mark Oberhauser. While responding to an emergency call, Mark's cruiser was crushed by a speeding 18-ton transport truck, leaving him with a devastating head injury. Mark has surfaced from a week-long coma, but is still struggling to free himself from the injuries sustained that tragic day. Thirteen weeks later, he remains unable to work and only sees his former colleagues as a civilian. It just takes a little longer time to do other things, say, like reading. I love to read a lot, but again, it just takes a little more time. I understand what I'm reading, of course, but it just takes a little more time to go back to policing. That's my goal and aim, but uh, however, I do believe that, that it will take, cost some time, of course until I'm ready to do that again. Mark's recovery from a devastating brain injury would not have been possible without the efforts of the trauma team in the first critical hour. Right now I feel great. Yeah, I, I can see and I hear from my family, my friends and other, other police officers that I am getting better and I feel, and I do, I feel so much better than before, of course and for the people that work at Sunnybrook. Thank you so much.